Hey, it's Patrick from Frontly. Today, I'm excited to share two brand new actions that just went live. So the first one is related to custom variables. Now, I won't go into too much detail on the custom variable system because it's a bit complicated, but I'll tell you what I've set up. So I have a custom variable and it's going to return the most expensive product from my spreadsheet. It's set up to use the price column for sorting and then it's gonna find the last record in the sheet. So that's how I'm going to grab the most expensive product. And in my page, I have this text block here that displays my custom variable. So custom dot most expensive product dot name. And then in brackets here with a dollar sign, I have the same thing, but dot price. So the outcome of that looks like this on my page. So I have a text block that says most expensive product, and then it shows the name of that product and the price. So if we go into my actual Google Sheet, so you can see that of all my products, this wireless Bluetooth headphone product is $999. And so it is truly the most expensive product. Now, if you've ever used the custom variable system, you'll know that previously there was no way to force the variable to update in real time, which caused some issues. Uh, the variable by default just loads when the page loads. And so it doesn't change in real time if anything's changing. Um, now there's a new action which is called custom variables. And in that action, you have a simple multi-select dropdown where you can select the variables that you want to refresh or essentially return the value from and that will happen in real time. So I've set up this action and I've also set up another brand new action, which is called the spinner. And so it's as simple as that. It shows a loading spinner um, and there's two different types of this action. There's either the show and there's hide. So at the very start of my action, I've triggered the show loading spinner and I've even added my own custom loading text, which says finding the most expensive product. And then at the very end of my multi-step action, I've triggered the spinner hide action. So you'll see what this looks like. And then in between, I have my custom variable and I have a notification that's going to return the custom variable value and just, well, it's just gonna show it in a, in a notification. And so I reference the response just like I do for any multi-step action. So it's step dot two, because this is the second step and um, dot name, and then do the same thing. And I'm setting it to this product name, local state value. So I'm doing a few things here. Um, I won't go into all the details because this video is mostly just about the, um, the ability to refresh custom variables now. But you can see I have this local state set up here. So this doesn't directly have a variable in it that relates to the custom variable, but it will be set with the response from that action. And then this is, is different because this is actually using the custom variable um, so that will trigger automatically when the page loads. So I'll just refresh this page so I can show you the full uh, setup here. So this automatically loads when the page loads. And now if I go to my sheet and I change this wireless Bluetooth to only $99, now the eco-friendly bamboo cutting board is the most expensive product. So if I go back to my app without having to refresh the page, I can click my button and you can see my spinner happened. And now not only did this local state get set with the new value, but this previous value, uh, which is the custom variable value automatically got updated as well. So very cool way to be able to handle these kinds of variable values, less frustrating. And also we have this cool loading spinner, which can be triggered from any action. And it's just a full page, partially translucent spinner. And it also supports custom text. So, most of the time, this is not really necessary, the spinner. Um, there are a few things like web hooks and some longer running actions, some AI actions where it just might feel like a better user experience if you, if you have that full screen spinner. A lot of the time when a button is triggering an action, we actually try to automatically um, show a spinner, but it's not happening in all cases just for different reasons. So now you can take control and trigger your own spinner as well. So anyway, those are the updates for today. Thanks for watching.